In this video, we'll talk about iteration statements. Iterations allow us to loop through a body of code, a block of code, a number of times until a certain condition is met. And there's a couple of different types of iteration statements. We'll look at two in this lesson, and we'll even look at them in relationship to arrays, something I promised several lessons ago. So let's start off by creating a new file and call it iterations.js. And inside of here, we'll create our first for loop. So for, and then there are three parts inside of the opening and closing parentheses. First of all, um, we'll let i equals zero, or we can actually just shorthand this and not even use the keyword let. And here i less than 10, i plus plus. And so this is gonna take some explanation, but let's just get this working first and then I'll come back and I'll talk about it. And we'll just print out the value of i, all right? What do you think's gonna happen here? If I didn't tell you anything about how the for loop actually works, what do you think will be printed to screen when we execute our script? Let's find out. So let's go here and type in uh, node iterations. All right, so we get a no, uh, several, it looks like 10 different values printed to screen, each on a separate line, zero through nine, and then our application exits. All right, so let's talk about this. It's a shorthand syntax, and there's three parts as separated by these two semicolons inside of this, uh, this evaluation header for the four. First of all, we declare a variable. In this case, I've declared i. That's why we use the let, but then I said, well, we don't really don't need it. Let's keep it short. So we're declaring it, and then we're going to um, initialize its value to zero. In the second step, we're gonna say continue running this for loop as long as this condition is true. So as long as i is less than 10, continue running the, the body of this for loop as defined with this uh, set of curly braces here. And then finally, after you've run an iteration, increment the value of i by one, all right? And here we're going to then print out the value. And that's why we start at the value of zero. And then we work our way all the way through this 10 times. On the 10th time, i gets incremented to 10. This, this check is performed. It's false. And then we exit out of the program. All right. Now, let's do something a little bit more interesting like I suggested before. Let me comment this out. Here, let's go um, let a equal to, and this should look familiar, 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, and 42. Whoops, I guess I forgot. Equal sign there. And now what we'll do is 4, i equals 0. i is less than a dot length i plus plus. Inside the body of this, we'll do console.log a, and what element? Well, we'll use i, because i will start off with the value of zero, and it will continue until we get to the length property, which is not zero-based. Um, and uh, once we get to, for example, the zero, one, two, three, four, five, so length will be six elements, so once i is six, it's no longer true that i is less than the length of this array and we'll exit out. So let's go ahead and save this and then run. And we can see we get all of our values printed out to screen. So that's the proper way to iterate through, or one way I should say to iterate through an array. Now, one thing about Visual Studio Code that I really love is that they have this notion of code snippets. So if you ever forget this, this syntax, and it can be a little daunting at first, uh, there's a way to remember it perfectly every time, and that is to let the code snippets build it for you. So I type in the for keyword, IntelliSense pops up with a little window under it, and I'll use the arrow keys to go to the for loop JavaScript. All right, there's a couple of fours, but the one that we want has this little box with dots underneath of it. That tells me that this is a code snippet. I hit enter on my keyboard, and now I get the basic structure of my, um, 
uh, of my for loop already created for the purpose of an array. Now notice that every word index is highlighted and I can change that uh, every instance of that by just using a letter. Like I'm gonna change this to the letter B instead of index. And notice that it changed it everywhere. And then I'm gonna hit the enter key on my keyboard, which is, was the wrong move. Then I'm gonna hit the tab key on my keyboard and I can change the name of the array now. Everywhere the word array is used, I can swap that out with the letter A, for example. I'll use the tab key one more time. Here it puts me to the, another replaceable area for the element and here I'll use C. I'll use tab one more time and then it kind of exits me out of that snippet replacement structure and now I can continue on and type like console.log um, and we'll just print out C, okay? So let's grab A from our previous example. And then we get the same results as we got before, but this time we didn't have to memorize exactly how to use for. The code snippet walked us through and allowed us to replace the names of the various replaceable areas like the name of the counter, the name of the array, and the name of the given element C that we extract out of uh, out of our of our array. Okay. So let's comment that out. That's four. And now let's take a look at the while loop. Um, so we'll talk about the difference between these. It may not be obvious at first. But essentially, we'll do this. All right, so take a look at this. Knowing what you know about loops, what do you think is gonna happen here? Well, we start off with one, and we're gonna to continue to execute this loop until this condition is false. So the very first time we run it, one is indeed less than 10. So we'll continue to run the body, the block that's associated with our while statement. And we'll print out the value of X and then increment its value by one. We'll continue to do this until we increment the value of X and it becomes 10, at which point this is no longer true, it becomes false. And then we'll break out and continue on. So let's go ahead and see what value, what, uh, what the value is that we get. So we get one through nine, that's expected, and once we hit 10, we break out, great. All right, so what's the difference between the while statement and this first for loop that we did here at the very top? Well, the difference is that the for loop, first of all, has a lot of infrastructure that we have to build, these three pieces, and um, it uses a series of indexes that represent the number of iterations that will move through uh, this block of code. Now, the while statement is a little bit different. Anything can be used to drive the iterations. As long as this statement continues to be true, we'll continue to execute this block of code. Uh, and so we control the number of iterations in the body. In this case, here I do the X plus plus. Now we don't have to use counters. We could use anything, any kind of business logic, like we may want to read to the end of a file and once we hit the end of the file, it no longer, it makes sense to continue to read each line of the file, then we would want to break out. So the while is a little bit more flexible in so much that we can build the business logic for how many times we're going to iterate in the body of the, uh, the while statement. Whereas with the four, we're pretty much limited to the number of times we want to run this being the number of times that we've kind of preset it up here in this top section outside the body itself, okay? Now there's also one last thing we can talk about and that's a way in both the for and the while, we can kind of circumvent this check right here and we may want to do a check like this. So if X is equal to seven, then we'll call the break statement. All right, so learning what we've learned about the if statement, it probably should look more like that, all right? So let's, first of all, let's make sure it works. All right, in this case, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Once we reach the seven, we circumvent this check and just say, hey, I wanna break out of this, all right? So we can use that always to break out, just like we broke out of the switch 
uh, when we wanted to not let it flow through additional cases. Now, the one thing I will say, if you notice how I typed this to begin with, let's retype that. So hold on, let me comment this out so that you can see it in the code if you wanna download my code. But we could also do it a little bit more shorter and in line since I only have one statement that I wanna make right after the if statement, I can do it on the same line and I don't need to surround it with a code block. A code block indicates that there's usually more than one line of code. In this case, there's just one line of code. Uh, I could put it on the separate line and use some indentation like that, or I can just keep it all on the same line since it's so short, but that might improve readability, or I might decide that this is a more readable form. That's kind of up to me, and if I'm working on a, with a team of software developers, I might wanna get and kind of do it the way that they do it. But stylistic for me, this is so short, I can read it all in one shot. If X is seven, then break out of it. It just, it looks good. It's very readable. I'll be able to understand what I'm doing later on. It doesn't take up and move the code down. So I like that, that format. If I just need to create one statement right after my if, uh, right after my if. So sometimes it makes sense to split things on separate lines. Sometimes it makes sense to keep two different statements on the same line. Uh, again, I think it kind of is a, a, a stylistic choice that you'll you have to make for yourself at some point. All right, so that is iteration statements. We looked at two different kinds and we looked at how code snippets can be used to help us remember the format. Now, I believe the while has, in fact, I believe most of the things that we've looked at has um, uh, some, uh, some code snippets available to them like if I find it here in IntelliSense, we hit enter on the keyboard, but there's not as much to it there. I mean, while with the condition I can change this to X is less than 10, right? Uh, it's not so much for me to type that out, but the four makes a little bit more sense because there's so many parts to it and replaceable parts of that. Okay, so let's continue on in the next video. We'll see you there. Thanks.